I'm on tandem cannon. <laughs> Already, Kevin. I'm excited because like y'all came on my show and that was just a really fun show. And so I've been looking forward to this like all year. I like our year end thing, but since I botched the opening, <laughs> welcome to Tandem Canon, the gamerific <laughs> podcast where co-op play is canon and we're probably on Santa's naughty list. <gasps> y'all are not surprised. Let's I be real. <laughs> I thought Kevin did a good job. So. I think so, too. <laughs> all right. I'll take this. Welcome to episode 43, Gaming All the Way, where we're going to reflect and project on 2017 and 2018 in gaming. This is Kevin. This is Tiffany. And this is Mia. Ah! Yeah. I guess let's go straight into the talk from Team Tandem. So, as you know, we got an additional voice. I think it happens to be Kevin from Twiatch. Isn't that right? Favorite person I ever. Am. Well, I am Kevin from This Week in Our Collective Heads. I have my own channel and my own podcast, and I enjoy y'all's. Y'all are local, so we hook up. We help each other out when we need it. I'm really grateful to be here. I love listening to y'all's show, and, and so it was really fun to, to get to interact, because like a lot of times, I'll be sitting there listening, and I'll be like, oh, no, I want to... Oh, I can't say anything <laughs> the entire time I'm listening to it, but this time, yeah. I get to react right away. It's great. I'm I love it. Great. And this is a long time coming, so we're really excited to get into this, mm-hmm. especially since this is our our year end episode so Woo-hoo. we're going to ask for forgiveness this episode so we're going to be epically long but you'll enjoy it i promise it's worth <laughs> your time we promise we got a new zelda we got a new mario this has been an amazing year oh yeah and we'll definitely get into that for gaming news we got the video game awards but i guess for right now let us talk about our video game homework so kevin if you don't mind yes we'll have the honor of going first okay i've been finishing up on shadow of war how is that okay so you know how Dynasty Warriors. It's not an amazing game, <laughs> but it's fun. Yeah. yeah. You just enjoy yourself and you play with a smile. And Shadow of War is kind of a step up from that because it's got the story, it's got the Tolkien lore, unless it decides to trample all over it by turning Shelob into a hottie. And some of that stuff just gets weird and bothers my Tolkien sensitivities. However, <laughs> it is a lot of fun and the replayability with all the different characters coming in has been a lot of fun. So I've been playing that and then I actually got a copy of Valkyria Revolution Plus, but that's coming out on Vita Tuesday and that's been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed that and then I've been doing all my reviews for the games with Golden PlayStation Plus for the Roundup. You've been busy. One of those. Yes, I feel so envious. We review all the free games on PlayStation Plus and Xbox Gold. That's something that I don't see anybody else doing, so we kind of get in there. What I used to do is I just download them and then left them and then every once in a while i'd be like dude this game's on sale wait i already have that (laughs) when did i get that but there is some really quality stuff in there so we go through and review those and one of the playstation ones it's on vita and i think ps4 it's called forma 8 and it's like this really weird game you're just floating around it's like this little orb and you're like exploring a wasteland and everything you get a couple of abilities but mostly you're just floating around exploring and trying to figure out what happened on this planet it's surprisingly entertaining and this is probably going to be my recommendation for this month oh cool it looks really neat that sounds fascinating Mm -hmm. yeah that's what i got cool well that's awesome i'm definitely going to go and get that one so mia what have you been up to I've just been dicking around with different games, but I played Back to the Future Episode 1 because it was one of those games where I downloaded two years ago. And yeah. I was like, let me just try something a little bit different. And I like certain aspects of it. Like, I like the story, but the controls are just, oh my God, they're just awful. Just not having it with a control scheme at all. And I was trying to stay engaged with it. And there's a lot of puzzles. Like, I can kind of see that it was the beginning of when Telltale was really starting to dig more into those type of games, like with The Walking Dead and The Wolf among us and stuff like that was like in the early sort of stages so i think that's part of the reason why it's just kind of awkward yeah. just trying to navigate well, back the world to the future was was the last game that they released before they really made it with the it's, walking dead season one right. exactly so. right. it still has that indie game feel i would point and click on yahoo when yahoo had a lot of cool downloadable games that's what it feels like to me but you definitely see where the potential was it's kind of like playing assassin's creed one versus two you see the groundwork but then the subsequent releases you see where they've grown. And I think if I had played it when it had first come out way back in the day, I think I would be a lot more forgiving and it wouldn't be as much of a big deal. One thing that I really do love about it, though, is the voice acting and how well they got a voice match for Marty. And I was kind of concerned about that with, you know, Michael J. Fox is what, in his 40s, 50s now? And so they did a surprisingly good job and the fact that they were able to get Christopher Lloyd to voice Emmett, I was like, oh, my feels and 
I just want to go back and rewatch the movies now. I also <laughs> played Saints Row 4 and I finally finished it this past weekend. Oh. And like I've been on this big Saints Row kick, I guess, like this nostalgic feel. And especially now that I've played through Saints Row, it's so interesting how many little winks and nods there are to the first two games. But the first one, especially when you have all these homies and after you unlock them, they can be part of your crew. And so it was just kind of weird having Julius and Tanya, a couple of the first game people that are adversaries for you. And it's especially when you get them in the car all together and they have unique dialogue. It's like, oh God, Ooh, this is interesting. So <laughs> it had me paying attention to more stuff than I did the first time I played. And certain homies become superheroes themselves. So they unlock all the same sort of skills. And when you get them all together, it's great. But the amount of chaos that happens in the amount of like maybe two seconds, Pierce, I would ride with Pierce, Shondi, and Johnny. And every single time Pierce would stomp on the same car that we were in, get everybody yep. killed half a block would get blown up and I'm like dear yeah. god of course it's Pierce and so after a while I'm like you have to stay here because you don't know how to act right but just riding along with Pierce I think even Miss Daisy's like no I'll walk to the damn Piggly Wiggly fuck oh this I'm, like, I'm just gonna keep on going <laughs> I can't with Pierce and his driving he can go kick rock but I think I appreciate Saints Row 4 even more now I just hate there's so many of the activities that are tied to the progression of the game like you have to do certain activities to unlock special powers and skills and so that can be a little frustrating if you just want to get straight through the story. But I did appreciate that they brought back a lot of people. I just wish we could have had like Carlos and Lynn, but you know, it was all good. And then I played Secret of Monkey Island. (laughs) This game is so silly. Uh -uh. I really do enjoy it. I'm at the part where I'm trying to battle the sword master and you have to unlock all these different insults to try to beat her. And I'm like, well, dang, I don't have a good retort for that one. But that one's been fun. It's just very silly and zany. And I love it. I think it's great. LucasArts. I love you guys so much. Oh, man. I miss (laughs) LucasArts so freaking much. They have a very fine line between being laugh out loud funny and having a little bit of that zaniness. But still, Guybrush is a pretty interesting character character and it's nice to run around the world and talk to people and I'm just what is wrong with this town i don't get it insult <laughs> combat is honestly if you could put that into more games right? devs I'm- Saying. That would be great. Be like <laughs> epic rap battles of history. The problem is the swordmaster is a black woman. I'm like, you can't out insult her. No, like we <laughs> grow much. up roasting each other. Like we're trained at this stuff. You have to be good. And she comes with it. I'm like, I don't have a response well, that's, to that. That's why she's the boss. She, she's a swordmaster. I'm like, I don't know if I'll be able to beat her, but it's still a fun adventure. And then Overwatch picked it up. Actually started some of the Winter Wonderland stuff. And yeah. it has been frustrating because yeah. the team comp dynamics are not working out. <laughs> I'm having to switch again. And then there was one kid that was spamming the, we need a healer. He was all the way on the other side of the map. I don't know what he was doing. I'm staying with the group because I'm not sacrificing the group's health for you because you exactly. can't stay with everybody. So if you're that far out, you don't need healing that damn much. Apparently nope. you think you can do everything on your own. So nope. spamming the button. No, oh, I was done. I needed to step away from this because I'm about to hit somebody. <laughs> I do not advocate violence against children, but I was like, please stop. That trope was a meme a year ago it's done Stop yeah it. but then again he did switch to genji a lot so that explains so much what about you Please, t- <laughs> did you do? Well, I have also played on Overwatch and gotten to the holiday fills and was able to unlock quite a few outfits, especially since I wasn't able to play Overwatch last winter because I think I got in January, February of this past year. So I'm in my holiday fills. I do love King's Row and how decked out it is and festive of like the big sleigh bomb. You actually get the guy to slay. I'm like, cool. Um, <laughs> well, that's cool. Where's the reindeer? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't help when if you have Torbjorn as Santa Claus, then it's complete. So I'm like, ah, oh, I feel so warm warm and toasty inside, capping people in the face. It's great. Isn't that what the holidays are all about? It exactly. is. Spreading love and cheer and hot laser lead. It's awesome. It's the other warm, <laughs> fuzzy feelings inside. <laughs> That's not blood. Outside of Overwatch, I've also started playing Curse of Osiris on Destiny 2. By the time we had recorded last time, I had not played it yet because it hadn't came out by the time we recorded. But now I've gotten into it and I have not finished the story mode, but it's pretty good. It's just sometimes it's just maddening when you have to go from place to place to place. I get it that a lot of gameplay, this is such an open world space that's not exactly linear, mm-hmm. but I hate the, oh, by the ways, oh, you're to this point, but oh, you have to go and get this item, or you have to go and do this <coughs> thing before you can come all the way back and do this thing. But a lot of the other stuff I've been trying to do is do Leviathan raids with my clan, 
And I wasn't able to do it at all in Destiny 1, but in Destiny 2, so we attempted it, all five of us. Realized we probably need a six person and a couple of Titans. Tried it again the next night, did not pan out for us because apparently with Raid, it's a part-time job. You can be there four to six hours and that's if your team is really good. It's a commitment at best and a lot of it, it goes in stages. You go at least three or four rounds of stages and they can take a long time. And that's at your best. That's not even including if you died. So yeah, I think eventually before I turn 40, we might actually solve <laughs> the freaking Leviathan. So, and that's one. And they released one for the base game. They just released the second one, which we haven't even started on. So the power level that you start at is 300 for both. I'm barely scraping by at 309, but it's still fun just shooting people. So I'm all right. Well, it's about being with the people. You have to enter these keys in order to unlock each of these bathhouses, but you have to at least have half of your team to find the keys while the other ones kind of like stay and protect the rest because there'll be other heavies that will come and collect them mm. and take them away from you if you don't protect them right. So that kept happening, but I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to use my ultimates and just shoot. I'm having a good time and the rest of the clan is like, yeah, so are we. So, <laughs> And that's all that matters at the end of the day. Yeah. Shooting yeah. stuff in the face with other people having a good it's time. Just, <laughs> it is. It's just frustrating <laughs> that once you get past a first level, it's not like the game saves. So if you don't finish it, you pretty much don't complete the entire thing. So I don't know. Eventually we might get there, but I know I definitely want to finish before the end of this year to finish at least the story month and get as far as I can along with my power up and see where I can go from there. So, so we'll <laughs> see. Let's go straight into gaming news. So, EA, still having a little trouble, I heard. Just Kevin, what are your thoughts on this? Because yeah. everybody else knows how we feel about EA and oh, yeah. Yeah, all the stuff is going down. <laughs> oh. Okay, so the thing with EA and loot boxes, how all this has gone down. The first question is, EA, how do you fuck up Star Wars? <laughs> you got Star Wars. <laughs> yes. How did you mess that up? Twice! The feedback that we were giving them was like, yeah, give us a single player campaign. They did. It's in there, but most of the people who come to Battlefront are looking for, I accept that my single player fanaticism, whatever, it's okay that not every game is for me. But when you have a game that you have to fix to remove microtransactions, when you get a call from the head of Disney, Disney. oh saying, man, you gotta stop what you're doing. Yeah. Yep. You done messed up. The really maddening thing about this, I told you I've been playing Shadow of War. There's loot boxes in there, kinda. But as I run around and get stuff, last time I logged in, I was like, oh crap, I can get like 15 gear loot box things. Okay. And then if you kill the commander of a fortress, then you get premium, whatever. But it was balanced, tested, and finished without loot boxes at all. Mm hmm. And then they added those in. And when you look at Blizzard and Overwatch, they've got loot boxes. They yeah. show up. There's outfits that I want. Okay, cool. Yeah. But if I don't get them, that doesn't mean that my junk rat now sucks. Exactly. Exactly. That's, and that's the thing. Cosmetics is fine. But you cannot put a pay-to-win system into a fully priced game. It's really frustrating because the way that this is rolled out, who are they talking to? Because these are just really bad decisions that don't really help anybody. Yeah. And during one of the investor calls, one of the head EA guys was saying, oh yeah, and like we've had microtransactions off for a little bit, but it hasn't really affected our bottom line. It was like, actually yeah. you lost $3.1 billion on top of the fact that nobody bought the game. After you get all that feedback and all that positivity and people are so on board with Star Wars now, this shouldn't be this freaking hard. I forgot I can swear on this show. This shouldn't <laughs> oh, be yeah. this hard. So it's really frustrating to see a company as big as EA mess up in just really obvious ways. When a company experiments, when they're trying something new, like the people who came out with Lords of the Fallen, that was kind of the first Soulsborne game by somebody other than FromSoft. And it was like, okay, you got some stuff right, you know, and then a year or two later, they released The Surge, and that's like the sci-fi version of Dark Souls. And it's like, okay, you got some things right, but they're experimenting. They're trying something new has already been figured out and dropping the ball. They don't appreciate what they have. They really didn't. Mm -mm. The bottom line to them 
was how to make money and sneaking it in in ways where they were trying to appease customers from the last release. But at mm-hmm. the same time, they're just like, we're going to make our money some way, so we're going to do this bullshit. There is a direct fiscal connection between mm-hmm. listening to your customers mm-hmm. and customers buying your games. They will buy it if it's good and worth it, but not for yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And it's a bad sign when you can't listen to your customers or respect them enough to do right by them. It takes a more powerful company than you to knock you down a couple notches. It took a bigger monster to let them know, no, Mm -hmm. you're fucking up my paper. You Mm -hmm. need to stop. I hate that it took something like Disney to step in. I wish that was taken into accordance with Andromeda, but there was no higher up to tell EA no that you were fucking up. The other thing is when you look at loot boxes and stuff, there's companies like Take-Two with the money they're making off GTA Mm V. They are making hand over fist, but they are constantly improving that. They put fucking DeLoreans in that game. Yes! Yeah, that's cool. Just fly around. It'll be fine. And they put in GTA Online, there is an entire another campaign in there. Mm -hmm. They're talking about how they're not doing any more single player. Okay, but there is another story you can go through. Yeah. The biggest games out of this year was Mario Odyssey, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Zelda. Those are single player freaking games. That's what we want. Don't shut down Visceral. Yeah. I have to believe that what they were. Thank you. <laughs> but I have to believe that what they were making was something I wanted to buy. Right. Right. And so that's disappointing. And especially since we haven't really had a single player experience kind of in the same vein since the Force Unleashed, maybe. And even then that was Force Unleashed 2 wasn't as good as the first one. Right. And so it's like, well, I think it might have been long overdue, especially now that we've seen more movies come out and everything. And I see little kids getting into Star Wars and just loving it. Mm-hmm. Speaking of things that EA kind of lost out on, there was the Game Awards, right? Mm-hmm. At the end of this year. Apparently, Nintendo did awesome. They pretty yeah. much went home happy. So, Breath of the Wild got Woo-hoo! Game of the Year. Mm-hmm. So, kudos to Zelda. And also, it had picked up a couple of other awards for the best action and adventure game and best game direction, which I think is just fantastic. And leap for for the Zelda series. I think mm-hmm. it was needing this boost for a long time. Yeah. And Super Mario Odyssey and how awesome that has been. Like, every Everybody I know is talking about Super Mario Odyssey. I did think wow. it was funny that the one award they took home was Family Game. Right. Okay. Yeah. I guess. Right. But that's just a quality game. And it's it was really fun to see as the Switch came out, they start with a bang. They mm-hmm. got Zelda at launch. They got Odyssey coming up in the fall. And right. we respect that. And we appreciate it. And we throw money at them. But it looks like a lot of the titles that they did release managed to get a couple of home runs out there. Also, we have Nier Automata and Hellblade's newest sacrifice to also managed to get a couple awards too. That's a big deal. Have y'all played Hellblade yet? No. Been wanting to though. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember what the award was that they won. I think it was like best narrative or something. I think one of it was the actress won the award. The thing about that particular title that I really appreciated was they tackled something tough. There was a lot of E3 when they did the Kara demo for Detroit and they're like, man, you're showing child abuse here. What are you doing? And it's like, okay, but this is important and games have the ability to put this forward in a way that nothing Mm -hmm. else does before you even start hellblade send you a sacrifice you can watch a documentary about how they brought in people who are actually suffering from the same mental conditions that Mm the lead Mm -hmm. character is dealing with they brought in psychologists and experts how to analyze this so this can be presented in a way that is respectful to the people that have it and allow those of us who don't to truly feel feel that level Mm -hmm. yeah games can put me in a place that no other medium can i can watch american history x that's a really hard movie to watch but when they go ahead and put out something like that i'm like yeah playing it this is what's happening to me just as a heads up that game needs to be played with headphones because it is an all-encompassing thing and for that character that is her world and it is Mm. truly difficult to really appreciate just how far they went to make sure that they were able to put forward an idea and a concept that is really difficult for some of us to wrap our heads around. Right. And I love the fact that they chose to do something that huge and that bold. Hellblade won for best audio design because when you're playing, the voices that she hears are what you hear. And it's conflicting voices. Some of them are like, oh, quick, pick up the sword. And the other one's like, no, the sword's going to hurt you. Oh, it's all these It's all these <laughs> conflicting voices and the difficulty of knowing who you are. 
I love the fact that the Game Awards are a place to highlight Mm -hmm. games that are doing something that simply cannot be done in other mediums. Right. And same with Nier Automata. Every time you watch a movie, it's going to be the same movie. Cuphead, yes. three win, and in every category, absolutely deserved them. Cuphead just looks amazing. I want to play so bad. We hadn't seen a game presented in pre-Disney animation. Yes. Like, that game's hard as hell, and it's mean, <laughs> and it punches me. I get so mad at it, and then I'm like, okay, let's do this again. Get back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get back up, keep trying. And just the brilliance of using the art and the music to show something else is just so much fun. Patrick's been posting his victories, so you don't see the ones where he's like throwing the controller at the wall and everything. <laughs> but like but like you get to see the victory and you can see the patterns that form it. It's not about memorization, but you gotta recognize four different patterns at the same time and know which one's coming up. Just like with Dark Souls. The more you play, the better you get. And that's just a fantastic feeling. And I'm so happy that they got recognized. Yes. Especially for an indie studio to do that. That's a big deal to walk away <laughs> with that many awards. I mean, they're practically tied with Nintendo for Breath of the Wild. So this is a big deal. I can't wait to see what else they, whatever IP they might have coming down the pike. I know they'll treat you with this great dignity like they did for Cuphead. Yeah. Well, yeah, we had to talk about Overwatch winning yeah. best ongoing game and best esports game. Yeah, we love Overwatch to pieces, and Mm -hmm. I'm really stunned that they're still trying to innovate and incorporate new maps and new characters and tweaking characters, and I'm really surprised Grand Theft Auto didn't win, but I understand why. Both done really, really well. One of the things that Blizzard does, the consistent balancing. Yes. Be meticulous about the way that they balance, and and every time Jeff Kaplan comes on, I'm excited about what he has to say because Mm -hmm. they Mm -hmm. have stayed excited about their own IP. But if the game didn't keep getting balanced and maintained for both casual and hardcore players, I have tremendous respect for yeah. Blizzard. So massive props to Blizzard and mm-hmm. listening to the community and just paying attention. That's all we want. We that's just want to be heard. That's how you engage with fans and the community. I wish more developers took notes on how yeah. Jeff interacts with everyone and is very respectful of us, too. He respects us as gamers, but also as right. consumers. Well, you see that just now with... With Hanzo's winter skin. Mm-hmm. How immediately when people had put that out there, everybody's like, uh, we're not cool with that. They're immediately <laughs> about to put out a patch to fix that. So yeah. they are conscious of satisfying their consumers, unlike <clears throat> some developers. Most developers. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much. Yeah. Going on to that, we had a couple of games that walked away with nothing. Horizon Zero Dawn and Destiny 2. <laughs> I didn't really expect Destiny 2 to win anything at all, but I was really surprised with Horizon Zero Dawn to have competition and going against Zelda. Honestly, if it was released at least four months before so it could make last year's grade, then I think it would be easily. Any other year, you walk away with The thing that I really appreciate about Horizon, they've been doing the Kill Switch series for 12 years or something, like completely different, completely awesome. Freaking nailed it. Yeah. And I cannot wait to see what they do next. Horizon Zero Dawn has consistently been at the top of the chart. I threw my money at him day one. Because- <laughs> You're like- Shut up and take my money. Pretty much. Exactly. <laughs> Starting a new IP with a female yeah. protagonist Badass. and being like, yeah, this is our BAMF. You connect with her immediately. I am a little bit disappointed that they walked away without gaming awards. Just because you didn't win the award doesn't mean that you didn't take a step forward for Destiny 2. Definitely is an improvement over Destiny 1. I acknowledge what they're trying to do and what they step forward to do. So That's congratulations awesome. to everyone on the gaming awards. Are we finally ready to love up. Let's do it, y'all. Let's level up. Da, da, da. <laughs> Jazz hands. See, we're just adding all your shit in, Kevin. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be an awesome episode. I cannot I know, wait. Right? All right. So for today's tandem topic tea time, we're gonna cover this year in gaming. Woo! 2017. Jeez, baby. Yeah. this has been a year, like hasn't it? It mm-hmm. has. I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> Let's start Kidding? with your favorite games. What was yeah. your favorite game you're of the, this year? But you're our guest. You should go first. I already went first. Okay. Persona 5. I've put in, I don't know how many hours into this game. I love it. It's my life. Yes. And in so many ways, it's a vast improvement over Persona 4 in terms of art style, art direction. User interface is seamless and there's so many different ways to play. And you have all the classic stuff with Persona. You have the character development, friendships and all that stuff. But I feel like the story is especially is relevant because it's about teenagers who are branded as juvenile delinquents 
confidence and they're going in and changing people's hearts and they're changing the worst people in society with sexual assault stuff and everything happening Uh, in Hollywood and politics. Yes, we need our own Phantom Thieves and the timing of when the game came out couldn't have been more perfect. And I'm really excited to see what happens with Persona 6 when we eventually get it. Persona 5 is definitely on my list, but like that 100 hour playthrough, that's intimidating as Uh, it's worth it. <laughs> it's so worth it, though. I know. It's it's I know. a very rewarding and I experience. Will. Yeah, and it's funny because I guess the Persona series has been my first official RPG experience, and I could not think of a better series to really jump into, other than maybe Final Fantasy. But still, Persona Five just completely killed all of my expectations. So I'm very very happy person, even with all the dancing games that will be coming out for it. But I like dance and games, a couple so. of fighters, and a couple of fighter games. But it's just a really wonderful series. Series and the story and the message it's trying to tell, it's just so relevant. And I want everybody to play because this is amazing and I need more people to fangirl with. So, yay. I will eventually finish that game and then we can fangirl together, all right? Yay! And I will put that on the backlog of all the other 15,000 games I have in my catalog. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Priorities. I, I think that's going to be my New Year's resolution is priorities which i will never fulfill but you try and that's what matters it's the effort that counts what about you tiff i'm gonna say destiny 2 and that's what i'm gonna say because i've been talking about destiny 2 for the last half of the year and i think everyone is sick of me mentioning destiny so i'm just gonna pass it on the cat okay let me ask you one question regarding destiny 2 and why it was your personal favorite the one moment where i was just totally invested is when after you're punted off the tower like a football and you land in the wreckage and you're pretty much limping away from the lost city you find your broken ghost and the music it killed me also watching everybody else's reaction to that that totally just made me realize just how much Bungie had turned around from Destiny 1 you understand law that yeah. was compelling to me it was yeah. the only one I was willing to prepay put my money on and I'm so glad that I did also the clan building to have the opportunity to meet with different people I've made new friends off of that too stay clan mates that are willing to play and be down for whatever if you need to it's kind of nice to have that belonging that you didn't really have in the first game. You weren't making new connections. Right, and they really made sure they had that. If you did not have a home, Destiny 2 was able to fulfill that for you. If you're not able to make friends that way, there were ways to do that either through forums or just playing in the open world and meet people that way, like I did like a couple weeks ago. So I think they deserve that. At least the nominations that they received, I thought that was a great step forward. So, Well put. What about you, Kevin? I like that. I've got kind of a tie. That might be cheating, but like (laughs) these are very different games i had somebody ask me what my favorite book of all time was there is not an answer to that I cannot which is your it. favorite twin you're not so, gonna do that yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it's nora but we're this is neither here nor there <laughs> la, la, anyway la, la, la. <laughs> i'm gonna delete that because i don't want to get you stabbed so <laughs> no but like these games are dramatically different the games that really grab me are consistently the ones that give me the most sense of accomplishment the ones that kick back the hardest that may be a bit of a masochist streak in me but the sense of accomplishment that i feel when i take down a boss or i take down a level that has been you know just annihilating me at the beginning and neo brought that in a way that nobody since from software has been able to do. Mm. And on top of that, there is so much history in there. William Adams is actually a historical character who sailed as part of a fleet of four ships from England to Japan in crafting their own ships mm-hmm. and improving mm. their ship making was actually what brought him into the leader's favor. And he actually got his own land. He was named a samurai. There are a few less magical creatures in the real story. I love a game that hits me with history and is like, hey, you want to go find out some more? Because I'm such a fan of Dynasty Warriors, this game actually gave me more historical context for a period I already thought I knew pretty well. And so any game that's going to punish me like a Dark Souls and educate me like a drunk history and encourage me to go find out more for myself, I am about that. That's awesome. However, Uh Horizon Zero Dawn was so amazing. (laughs) That just came out of nowhere. Horizon is like, we're going to throw you into the future, but with clans, with a female protagonist, we're going to give you a bow and arrow. Go for it. Go kill those robot dinosaurs. I've had a blast. I haven't finished it yet. I'm still running around collecting everything because I'm playing through the story parts with my girls. Because I want I want them to see female protagonists as heroes to be a bam and to kick ass. Agreed. 
Agreed. And so, you know, huge shout out to Gorilla for moving up that direction and having the guts to put a female lead. And it doesn't matter. She is every bit as badass as Samus, as Lara, as all these other ones who have come before. And she is the next face of PlayStation. That's awesome. Nathan Drake is retiring. He is. He's sailing off the sunset. They've got Ratchet, Clank, and Kratos. But Aloy is the face of PlayStation. Fucking love it. That's awesome. Said it here. Kevin said it here. Damn near made me want to cry. I know. So good. You're the best dad ever. Uh. I know. Like, I'm not sure which one I want to play. I know I need to finish my Uncharted series, but at the same time, I got Horizon. I want to play it so bad. Right. Horizon <laughs> is, is a heck of a lot of fun. Speaking of feelings. <laughs> straight from the top all the way down to the bottom. <sighs> oh, disappointment. Games that did not live up to what they should have been. A lot of these we can double dutch on. Star Wars Battlefront, y'all. I mean, y'all knew what this yep. was. <laughs> yeah. so, Star Wars Battlefront, unfortunately, was one of the games that kind of got lost in the shuffles with those stupid microtransactions. Mm-hmm. So essentially, that's where the disappointment comes in. The lower class and middlemen kind of got left out for those that were willing to pay to win the race. So unfortunately, if EA lost on the good thing and Star Wars Battlefront 2 became like another disappointing follow up so unfortunately I didn't play for this reason EA kind of ruined me for buying anything in advance like I did for Star Wars Battlefront 1 our friend Scott Murray says he's enjoying the game he of course is a Star Wars fanboy to begin with so he's enjoying it for what it is it's just a lack of condition for me because Burmy wants shame on you but you're not going to do it to me twice so I just could not put any money on that I'm going to red box it I'm going to play through the single player campaign and give it back <laughs> I don't really want to give them money for something that they messed up so badly. No, they didn't earn that money at all. Mm-hmm. It's sad because graphically, for the most part, it looks really awesome. But yeah. still, it's like they listen to some parts of what people were saying. But then they're yeah. like, we're still going to stick you with this money, though. So if you want That's Darth Vader. Secret, <laughs> under the table bullshit. <sighs> it's just like, like they like to do. They're shaking your hand, but at the same time, they got a dark gun underneath the table. Like, that doesn't do anything for us. Han might have shot first, but EA is going to shoot you first. Mm-hmm. In the dick. If you don't pay for this shit now i want to go watch once upon a time in mexico (laughs) (laughs) ea makes me want to go to therapy so bad ea needs to go to therapy and learn how to be a better company for a minute so a second one for me was ghost recon wildlands me and me and managed to play the beta we enjoyed it for what it was it was just cool to go through and just watch my brother kill people and for what it was the game was still full of bugs the beta only came out like a month before Mm -hmm. the game's release so there was no fix in there when it comes to co-op it's a little harder to keep your people from being detected on missions it's a crapshoot of a game that's not really worth its full price tag so i'm kind of glad i waited till black friday to get a bullshit price for it i'm glad we Um, waited on that one (laughs) Yeah, I enjoyed it for what it was because I do like the customization that you get to do because you get to be yourself and immerse yourself in the game, even though I still don't fuck with one skin for a black people. That's not cool. There's more yeah. shades to us. Beautiful game. It really is. It's a vast improvement over Future Soldier. I'm kind of glad that they took that step forward, but at the same time, there's a little lacking for this series, unfortunately. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate. So Yeah, but I got me and me a copy on Black Friday, so hopefully we'll be able to play just for shits and giggles because we still enjoyed the game for what it is and plus now you got predator in there so i mean oh, God. True. that's okay i got you <laughs> i don't want to go up against predator no thank you <laughs> i just want to hear that you are one ugly motherfucker anyway mm-hmm. yeah what you got mass effect andromeda sorry but I for totally different reasons i missed out on mass effect i have a couple of years where i really didn't game and when mass effect started out it was an xbox exclusive shooters in general are not for me but i love the dynamic and the idea of being able to choose your own path make your own path or whatever and so i really liked the idea of Mass Effect 1 through 3, someday. This is on my bucket list. I'm going to play through that on story mode. I can't shoot. That's okay. I just die. But I do want to see that story. I want to make those decisions. Mass Effect (laughs) coming through and being like, okay, we're just going to throw you into this new universe and check it out. And I was really excited about that. And like I saw a lot of the abilities, like the weird shield looking thing. I was like, that kind of looks like magic. A magic shooter. Yeah, I can do that. And it seemed like the right place for me to jump in and be on board with everybody with it. And then the people on the boat were like, you know what? This boat is not that great. You should probably just hang out somewhere else. There was just so much broken with that game when it came out. Like it was, yes. it was like, but 
Bethesda levels of broken. And on top of that, there's a lot of crossover here. So Mia's going to handle the rest of that too. But this is one of those series that I want to love. I want to play. I want to jump in. Mm -hmm. And they didn't give me the opportunity. And then my other minor gripe, Gravity Rush 2 did not come to Vita. Gravity Rush was phenomenal on Vita. It is perfectly designed for a handheld system. When you move that to the PS4, it's prettier. You can do more with that system. But Gravity Rush was something special that came for those of us who had Vitas. But I'm perfectly fine with that jumping over to PS4. And Gravity Rush 2 not coming to Vita felt like kind of a betrayal for those of us who were still holding on to that system. I was hoping it would be kind of a, this was the last big first party game we were going to get. And they didn't mm. give it to me. I was bummed about that. But overall, 2017 still a baller year. Agreed. So, yeah. Mia, what you got? Well, I got to talk about Mass Effect Andromeda first because that's yeah. the biggest one for me. And it wasn't a bad game. I have to clarify that. It wasn't a bad game. It's just that even when you take Andromeda by itself as an entity, it it wasn't to the level that I would expect a Bioware game right? in terms of story and character development. And those are two of the best things in Bioware's wheelhouse. And so when you feel so disconnected that you don't feel invested in those parts, that's a big red flag. Especially um, when it was established in lore three games ago. Yes. I mean. <laughs> yes. From the first game, you're automatically invested. How can you lose that magic? Well, yeah. Yeah, a lot of decisions and a lot of political stuff happening on Bioware's end. They really messed it up, I think, more than anything else. But those are the two parts that really did not connect for me at all was the story and the characters. I like right. them, but I didn't feel the same investment that I had for the original trilogy characters. Even right. people like Ashley, which I didn't really care for. I still right. felt in some way like... Like, this is a squad mate, my teammate. I still have a right. responsibility to her. And so, right. it, damn it, y'all have one job. They had a perfect setup for it. We're in a new galaxy. We have to start over again. There's all these different situations we have to deal with in terms of the politics of, you know, settling in a new territory and dealing with the aliens there. And how do we move on from our past mistakes? And do we repeat everything that's happened in the first game with having the Citadel and these established races being the dominant species here and in power? And I liked how they did broach those subjects, but it wasn't on the same level that I was wanting, especially with Ryder. I think that was the biggest mistake. Yeah, yeah, you have the customization, but if you can't connect with your main character in some way, even if they're not necessarily likable, then that was more what got me. It was more of a disappointment from just the overall Mass Effect experience. But what story were they trying to tell? Like, what was the ultimate goal? And they focused so much on the action part and combat, which was fun and very amazing. I like what they did with it with the jetpacks and you can change your class and all that at any time that was really cool but, yeah and it was pretty but when it, when it comes to bioware you yeah. expect something more than just a fun more. video game yeah. yeah it has to be substantial story and characters are their bread and butter and that's Full why immersiveness that's why people play bioware games and so there's a certain expectation that comes with that and andromeda didn't really deliver on that front and they've done patches and whatnot but the fact that ea was like well we're just not going to do any dlc for you guys since you're gonna be butts about it. I'm like, really, y'all are so petty. <laughs> and that's why they got Mickey Mouse booted stomped yes. in their face for Battlefront. I'm just so I'm like, really annoyed by it because the way that EA responded to the criticism was very petty and it wasn't about trying to listen to their customers and especially fans who had been with the series from the jump. It was just like, well, we're just not gonna do it. We don't care. They totally like, pulled a Taylor Swift on that. <laughs> I hate y'all so much. Oh my God. And I'm really worried about what this means for Anthem and that's a whole different conversation. And Another one was Agents of Mayhem. Yeah. Me and Tiff are huge Saints Row fans. I love Volition, but they really screwed up by not making this game co-op or any sort of multiplayer, especially when the setup was ripe for that. And like, that's what a lot yeah. of people in the community Ugh. have been saying. Why didn't you make this co-op to yeah. begin with? Yeah, Number everybody one. is just baffled and just very upset by this. I think it would have made the game much more fun. It was very repetitive the way they had missions set up. And it has like a combination of Overwatch a little bit and cracked down from what a, yeah. the gameplay I was like y'all didn't really try did you? I think probably the biggest error for that one was locking Johnny Gat behind a DLC paywall I was not happy about that Yeah, yeah. y'all yeah. really fucked up Johnny was supposed to be the gateway for this game for this IP to grow and they really screwed that one up even now I'm, I'm waiting for a price drop Gamefly has it for 10 bucks even less expensive now than some of the more recent used games that have come out and that's very telling 
It came out in August. <sighs> yeah. Right? And so it's in enough trouble that Jim Boone had to come back and he's acknowledged some of the things that have happened with the game. But, yeah. you know, when you have a developer that from the beginning, they've incorporated co-op and multiplayer and they've encouraged that stuff. I don't understand what the rationale was for taking that out, especially for something like this. And then considering got out of hell and kind of like with Mass Effect Andromeda, it should have been a way of wooing fans back into the fold of the Saints Row community and bridging the old fans and the new fans and then starting from a new point from there. But clearly they did not talk to fans at all because everybody's wish list was we want co-op, we want multiplayer. If they wanted to explore new avenues, then don't tie it to the first franchise. Right. Hmm. You know, if this had been just a different game by Volition and it hadn't been tied into the Saints Row universe, then this could have been a, okay, well, let's see what else you can do. When you put Johnny fucking Gat in the game behind DLC, you know why we're here. Exactly. So, come on. They made so many missteps with that one. Another one I had was 1-2-Switch. Me and Tiff played that a little bit at Infinicon this past August. And while it was fun for what it was, it's not a type of game that you can play for a long time. It wasn't Wii Sports. Mm -hmm. No, Wii Sports was fun. And we played that consistently. Everybody wanted to play that. It was good and interactive and you can pretty much do your own kind of showdown. And there was a lot of stuff that was cool to do, but a lot of activities that we pretty much skipped. It wasn't really appealing after one play. There was a treasure chest that was wrapped around in chains and you had to rotate your controller and whoever rotated it first wins. I actually kind of like that one. (laughs) That one's pretty cool. (laughs) That one and the samurai clap game where you're trying to catch the sword. Oh yeah. Like there's a couple that were in there that were fun, but it was the kind of stuff that you play it once, you enjoy it, you have a little bit of fun and then you're done. And like on to Breath of the Wall. (laughs) Exactly. Mm -hmm. The other thing was bringing it back to Wii Sports. Grandma's played that. Everybody played that. Mm -hmm. And then this is something that's kind of fun for the gamers. Snipper Clips was awesome. That should have been put in the spot where 1-2-Switch was. 1-2-Switch demonstrated a lot of the abilities of the controller. It's cool, but if you're going to make us pay for the game, then we need a little bit more. Exactly. Like If it had been included with the Switch, nobody would have had a problem with it. Yeah, a lot of people, that $50 price tag for it, it wasn't worth it. Like, I might as well go ahead and pay $10 more for something a little bit more substantial. So, Mm -hmm. let's go into gaming trends of 2017. So, this is essentially stuff that we have seen growth in the gaming industry. Good, bad, and different. Number one for this one, unfortunately, microtransactions everywhere. Um, A lot of other people do that too, but this has mostly been EA's gravy train right now. With Disney pretty much telling them to stop it, hopefully this will put an end to a lot of other developers wanting or thinking about doing the same thing. Then again, not a lot of developers have bigger juggernauts than them. Mm -hmm. So do you think it might not necessarily stop at least decrease a little bit and they go about it a different way or what do you guys think? I really don't have a problem with microtransactions per se because when DLC first came out there was a big push against it it was like ugh horse armor. Yeah. Actually my favorite example of microtransaction is Blizzard and all of that stuff is cosmetic. And that's cool. I'm fine fine with that. Yeah. yeah, and you throw that in there, and Shadow of War, you can get a benefit sometimes through a thing, but the important element of that, it was balanced, and I said this earlier, it was balanced and tested without right. the microtransactions, and then they threw that in there as just a, hey, if you want to throw a couple more bucks at us, do that. And so I would like to believe the failure of Battlefront 2 and the huge financial price that they paid for that will help developers be able to recognize that there is a right way and a wrong way to do microtransactions. Agreed. If you do it the right way, I have no problem with it. When it comes to mobile games, if I play a game and I'm enjoying myself for a couple of hours, yeah, I'll throw it through bucks yeah. at you. But if I'm paying a $60 game, you got my money. Exactly. Now give me my game. Exactly. Or EA just being shameless about it and just not caring oh, and just seeing how far they could push it yeah pretty because much i honestly believe that they always expected to bring it back to roll it back you said it was shameless mm-hmm. and that's not okay unfortunately quote unquote for them they picked that wrong ip to really push that envelope with so it's kind of good that there was some blowback here so maybe they will go back to the drawing board especially with the stuff that they do of late closing a lot of their studios in bioware montreal and visceral so maybe they can actually go back to the drawing board on a lot of their ips and really think about what they're going to put out before they do it completely exploit their consumers yeah. yeah but speaking of bioware and volition and visceral there's a lot 
lot of studio shakeup this year for those crews in particular. Mm -hmm. Bioware had some heavy hitters leave. Telltale lost 25% of their people. Visceral got shut down. Volition had to make substantial after. cutbacks mm -hmm. after everything went down. And then the SAG strike, something that hit a lot of companies pretty yes. hard. Yep. Like having yep. for the prequel, Before not, the storm. not being able to have Ashley Birch come in and reprise your character. She came back in for episode five. Or It was a weird, tense time seeing some of the ugliness behind the games that we get. But my biggest grief on this year with this particular topic is the shutdown of Visceral right before they bought the company that did the jumping mech game. Yep. Their statement about, well, it was turning into a single player focused story driven game. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You brought Amy Hennig from Uncharted. Yes. What the fuck what did the you fuck think she was going to make? Exactly what she does. And yes. she's good at it. So if you're going to have this kind of attitude toward that kind of game, then why the hell did you occupy her for three years? Because Thank she could have been doing something else. Yeah. Pretty much wasted her time. And then having the audacity to say nobody plays single player games anymore. I was like, Apparently that is a you don't know your lie. consumers. Exactly. Yes. The devil is a lie. <laughs> My God. Horizon, Breath of the Wild, <laughs> Mario Waddits. Three oh, biggest yeah. games of the year. Mm -hmm. Nero Automata. Those are all single player experiences. What? Exactly. I completely don't understand. Just developers that have lost touch with their audiences. Mm -hmm. they, they don't consumer group. They don't ask anybody how they feel until it's too late. I don't feel like their analysts actually play games, honestly. The they people don't. that they consult. Y'all clearly don't play anything. Um, better news. There's been a lot of people getting on that Switch train. What? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep, included. What? And yep. even Skyrim. I need Skyrim to die. <laughs> I love Skyrim for what it is, but I need them to move on. It's been yeah. enough. Let it go. I mean, Skyrim Cops is on like, what, season six or seven now? Let it lie. But the cool thing is with the Switch, you're seeing a lot more ports to the Switch and people vie to get that slot. And Shin Megami Tensei is coming back with oh. a game specifically for the Switch. And I'm like, I want to play the thing. Heck yeah. yeah. And it's coming west. Yes. I need this in my life. Speaking <laughs> of consoles, too, we also have Xbox One X 4K being the big thing this year. Yeah. Especially at E3. 4K, 4K. Like, shut up. Pretty much. Shut it was up. 4K, <laughs> and it was mostly done on Xbox One, wasn't it, for the most part? There's a little bit on PS Pro. Honestly, this advance is pretty and everything. My games are pretty. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Come at me whenever you got a $400 TV. I can upgrade to 4K for that. It's coming, and I'm happy for people who, like, really need that kind of graphical Vision. upgrade or whatever yeah. but that's not why I'm here I'm here for the story right. characters and so I'm like you I enjoy graphic advancements great push the envelope especially to see people who don't play video games like us to see the beauty in what we see even without it being 4k across the board but I can appreciate it just as much on my own screen and enjoy it for what it is especially if I'm already immersed in the story mode you already mm -hmm. have me hooked I don't really have to rely on the graphics for yeah. the, it to tell me my Story. And especially with the cost of everything, if you get this system, you have to upgrade this and you have to upgrade your TV. Particular kind of 4K and it's a particular kind of HDR. Yeah. The one thing that I really do see as far as 4K and pushing the envelope and moving the tech forward is the way that it's interacting with VR, which has also been a big success story this year. It came out last year. We got the Vive and the Oculus, the PlayStation VR and everything. And PSVR has now sold 2 million copies. And a lot of games are coming out for that. And I feel like that that's on better ground now, probably because of the advancements made to get to 4K. You need to be able to push the tech to get it to the next level. And I think right. that they've really done that. The money that people are spending on 4K is necessary to keep the VR moving forward. And so if you're one of those people, you're listening, thank you. But I'll be playing my games and my games are pretty. I love these characters. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. And in other news, esports has always been a big thing, but I feel like especially now it's blowing up. Yep. Overwatch has their specialized teams. Yes. I've been wanting to watch the Dallas team do their thing. There's so many different new investors now that are not even part of gaming getting interested in esports and the money that right. they can make. So when I went to QuakeCon, even with broadcasting the video, it looks like it's on television now. The budget has definitely gone through the roof for this than it was last year. And people are cheering like they're at a freaking Cowboys game. The dedication and skill that they devote and sharpen in order for them to get to compete is such a great thing this is finally coming to the forefront and the big thing that's brought that about is the inclusivity of broadband you can't watch esports on the connections we had 10 even five years ago mm -hmm. oh yes and yes. so it's really important to be able to get that information about immediately i'm more of a casual 
esports it's just kind of a fascinating thing that takes place on an external level for me but it is really fun to see where it goes and yes gaming can be a toxic community there's also that other part of gaming and i think that esports is really bringing it out where it is about the community it is about the connection that we find through our shared love of games and being able to bring issues that people have legitimately and be able to say, I deal with this too. I love it when a celebrities step forward and they talk about their depression or their issues with mental illness. I've been able to talk a little bit about my issues with depression and anxiety over the last year. That was something I wasn't able to do. And it's been really phenomenal to see the support that I've gotten from the people around, whether it's esports, whether it's just for being a good person. When we're able to see those people and they're like, hey, I'm just just like you, I struggle. That is a really powerful system that allows people to come out and be like, you know what? It's okay that I don't know how to handle social situations, that I'm just scared sometimes, or sometimes I have trouble getting out of bed. Esports is blowing up, but I also see a lot of good being done as a result of the type of people that rise in esports. And that's Great. really fun. Great. And right. we're seeing games also being reflective of that, of being more inclusive and fostering that community. We're seeing that in terms of representation in, in the games <laughs> that we've noticed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, talking about mental health. And now I really want to play that because it's like, I know people that are dealing with those issues through Tumblr and through real life and stuff. And to maybe experiencing that will help some people understand sort of how mental health is and understanding ableism and why you have to be mindful about your language, even in a casual setting, how little things that we take for granted with our speech, those things affect people on a larger scale, especially when it's stuff that they hear all the time, yeah. those microaggressions. We also saw a lot more with the LGBTQ community and Dream Daddy. Like everybody was playing Dream Daddy this year and yep. that yes. blew up and it was just so interesting because you would have straight men playing this game and making decisions on who they date based on different aspects and treating them as real human beings and not just, I just want to bang this person. You know, right. and it reminded me a lot of the Ultima games in a way because you oh, have girl. all these suitors <laughs> to choose from and everybody has they're good and bad traits and but they were treated like people first and foremost and right. they had yeah. their own separate personalities never got a chance to play it but I just yeah. thought it was neat so whenever I play the Dark Souls games I have a family lineage and they're all Lady Nymeria however in Dark Souls 2 you can actually create a trans character. Really? So I started my character as a male. Yeah. And in the first tutorial area, there's this little coffin thing. And if you step into the coffin, when you come out, your gender has been switched. Cool. And, yeah. yeah. And so EA in uh, Inquisition a couple of years ago had the first trans character. Boundaries are being pushed. Mm -hmm. And these boundaries are important. What else did y'all notice this year? The women pro tags. Yes. Yeah. We got her. Horizon, Sinuous Sacrifice. We got mm -hmm. Uncharted Lost Legacy, which is a pair of female protagonists. Yes. We got Metroid Samus Returns. Thank God Samus Aran is back. Xena and Valkyrie Plus, which is an indie game that they got a little less coverage, but it's pretty fun. Gravity Rush 2 has Cat and, again, two female protagonists. And then mm -hmm. Cosmic Star Heroine, which is a 16-bit throwback mm -hmm. to games of the past. But we're taking it over. Here. And it's fantastic. Give me the option. I'll play as a female character. I want to be exposed to something that is outside of my experience. I mean, in Horizon Zero Dawn, you not only have a female protagonist, but you have an entire matriarchal society. Mm -hmm. And there was a time when they say, well, you know, you can't sell a game like that. And Aloy is hot. I mean, I got a thing for gingers, but her appeal doesn't come from her sexiness. Mm -hmm. Right. This is not the boys playground that it used to be. When I was growing up, it was mostly guys who were playing games. And we were really excited anytime a girl was willing to play with us. But there's been so much hostility aimed at y'all. And it has been made so much more difficult for girls to be gamers. Yeah. And right. so for the diversity and inclusivity that I've seen this year is really encouraging because I want my girls to grow up in a world where play games. Because games are fucking awesome. Right. And there's no reason to restrict that or to put limits on what it is that you enjoy. Inclusivity <laughs> in games took a major step forward with very high profile games. But it means that my girls are going to grow up in a world of video games that are better than the world that I grew up in. That's mm -hmm. why you're the best dad ever, honestly. Exactly. <laughs> Aww. Thanks. 
Yeah. It's true. We see a lot of intersectionality. You have lesbian women, bisexual women being represented also in games like Dishonored, Death of the Outsider. And yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, you already have a female protagonist for Dishonored 2, but then you have another character. And she's a person of color. I like they are starting to listen that female protagonists can still sell a great game as long as you do the story right like you would do any other title. The new Tomb Raider reboot just goes to show that it can be done mm-hmm. if you're yeah. willing to do it. Absolutely. Also, we kind of talked this a little bit, but indie games has gotten a little bit more of a push this year. I mean, yeah. they are coming out the woodwork with Cuphead winning so many. But I just love how the independent titles are giving the bigger developers a little run for their money. So it goes to show, especially with EA being in such a precarious position right now, that possibly can open up for other indie games to probably get a crack at bigger titles like Star Wars. So let's talk about the games that we want in 2018. Stuff yeah. that yeah. we're not sure that might come out, but there are possibility. So who wants to go first this time? Me, it's me, me. I'm yeah. going to go first. <laughs> go, go, go. Okay, so at the Game Awards, From Software played three seconds of game footage. Basically, a picture and a phrase that says, Shadows Die Twice. That's all I got, and I don't give a fuck. I'm a buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I do not care. I trust From Software. So my theory on this, because of the kanji in the background, I think this is Tenchu. Ooh. And Miyazaki has said that he wants to kind of give the Dark Souls series a rest. He's like, you know, maybe I'll come back to it someday. Demon Souls actually started development in 2006. So he's been making those games for like over a decade. Mm. And I want to see what else he's got. Or I guess about midway through last year, he said, we've got two projects. One is something that you're expecting. And I think that's going to be Bloodborne 2. And he said the other one is something you're not expecting. Based on the kanji and the fact that the last Tenchu game was actually made by From Software. Tenchu was a lot of fun when it came out. And if it's not Tenchu, if it's not Souls related, I do not care. From (laughs) Software has my complete faith. And whenever they choose to release this, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to play it. I'm going to love it. So I've got that. I'm looking forward to Far Cry 5. I'm hoping that they take this time to make a statement. Because with Far Cry 3, they made some really heavy statements about the nature of autocracy and and the way that we take responsibility for our actions and Mm. the way that those actions have consequences. Far Cry 4 actually drifted away from that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Far Cry 5, it's set in America as a Bible-thumping group uses the Bible to justify things that could no way and be justified by the Bible. And that's one of the things that's really frustrating for me. I am a Christian, and it makes me really, really angry when people use the Bible or religion, I don't care what your religion is. If you use religion to justify oppressing innocence and stepping on people, fuck your religion. Exactly. That is it's about helping people less fortunate than you and just making sure that you don't get corrupt and greedy based on what happens. Mm-hmm. And Far Cry 5 just based on the setting, looks like something that could be making a statement. Mm-hmm. I hope they do. If they don't, I'm just going to take towers and kill a bunch of people. (laughs) But Far Cry is dumb fun. That's fine. But I really hope they say something too. I don't know if Ubisoft will actually completely take that leap of faith. I hope they do. (laughs) I hope they do, but I don't know if they have that power. A lot of bigger developments, they want to make a statement, but stay as neutral as possible. When the idea of punching Nazis becomes a bit of drama and controversy, what the heck is going on? Exactly. So, 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 yeah, I can see how Ubisoft as a company would be like, eh, maybe we'll shy away from that a little bit. But right. like, have the potential to make a statement. I want to play Far Cry 5 because I like sneaking around and, and stabbing people. And that'll be a good cause to stab it for. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> there you go. I'm about to have a cross burned in my yard. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Nino Kuni 2 is coming out. I played the first one with my girls. And Aww. Nino Kuni 2, from what I can tell, looks like a kid trying to reclaim his throne and to figure out where power comes from where is it okay to like blur the lines if you can make life better for your people by doing some kind of bad things where does that line get drawn i think that'll be a really fun thing to talk about with my girls i use video games as an educational tool and so nino kuni one we talked about what would you feel like if 
your mommy or I died to talk about them with that in a completely safe environment. Mm. And so Nino Kuni 2 looks like the idea of what is power and who should wield it. And those are complicated issues. And then my last looking forward to 2018 is Spider-Man. Spider-Man yeah. has been my favorite superhero since I was a tiny kid. I was like probably eight or nine years old when I first heard the great power and responsibility. And this kind of ties back into Nino Kuni. When you're responsible for more lives than yourselves and like he feels the impact of his failure did i do everything i could and that's the question we should be asking ourselves whether we're a superhero or not that's what makes spider-man interesting to me to see insomniac take on spider-man i think it might be the game i've been waiting for that's what i'm looking forward to in 2018 awesome what y'all got one of the games i've been looking forward to it seems for like 15 years is god of war (laughs) I am looking forward to Zangifi Kratos. I haven't really saw anything outside of the original gameplay they had showed us at E3 last year. I like to play things as cold as possible if I can. Mm-hmm. The same with The Last of Us. Now, I have not still watched this last trailer, even though people are like, you need to watch it. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's a doozy. But yeah, it usually is. That is why <laughs> easily those are two of the games I'm looking forward to. And honestly, I'm not sure about putting all my money down for God of War, but definitely Last of Us is probably going to be the money I throw to go and get that game so (laughs) i'm definitely looking forward to those games but i have more to come mia oh god i have a laundry list i'm so sorry first game is yakuza 6 the song of life i am such a fan of the series and i've only played one game but i'm so thoroughly invested in all the lore and (laughs) stuff and the fact that they're really going out of their way to revitalize the older games but they're making at a price point where it's accessible so they really want people to get involved in the series and understand everything that's going on behind it so that's one i don't know if this one's coming out next year but cyberpunk 2077 is being made by cd project red who did of course the witcher 3 and Mm -hmm. from what i can tell it looks like a really cool cross between the witcher and maybe deus ex a little bit cool Um, and so i'm still kind of doing research we don't have a release date yet Mm -hmm. another one is sea of thieves i'm really excited about this one especially Mm -hmm. because you're pirates but you get to play co-op and you can play online against other people so um you know people can and take up certain roles on the ship like you have to actually get the sails out and steer the ship and if you're pulling up the anchor like you gotta work together to make your ship function and actually be a real crew a real team and so I'm like this sounds amazing because I can only imagine all the shenanigans we can get into oh Just straight ro- up <laughs> straight up I just want the sea shanties back. Yes. I need those. We can make up our own shanties. Like, we don't and even plus, need theirs. Yeah. And plus, this is the first game I've ever seen where you can get drunk and vomit on a fellow player. Yes. I mean, holy yes. shit. You can fall out of the boat. <laughs> That's I mean. awesome. Right? <laughs> it's about to be a bad college Friday night. It, I mean, yep. it's going to get lit. You can have and instruments. Bring me that horizon. That's all I have to say. And the, the funny thing is, like, your boat can sink, it can get an accidents and if your boat is starting to sink you can get the water out and you have to literally go down there and make it work yeah i'm excited about this because i feel like it took the best parts of ac black flag with the mm-hmm. sailing and all that but the fact that you can do this co-op and you can stick up other pirate teams and explore islands that sounds so much fun prove the fuck up yes. yeah squad up another one the wolf among us 2 i'm so mm-hmm. in love with this game and the visual style of it the story was excellent the characters yes. oh my gosh what else could we actually get into at this rate um, oh you know how many fairy tales there are girl oh, and that was a short game too it wasn't long so no. they got more to tell they also focus really heavily on the Grimm's fairy tales mm-hmm. and like yeah. there's they've shown willingness to explore other ones because like wind in the willows wasn't part of that so yeah there's a whole lot more to explore and the the fable series goes into the various characters so mm-hmm. yeah and then by special request, my sister's in the background here. She requested for 2018 that we get Kingdom Hearts 3. I won't hold yes. my breath at this rate. But Not <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 2.8. Yes. No. The actual 3. Actual I quit three. fucking around. But actually Kingdom Hearts 3, if it does release next year, it'll be a miracle. But I'm not going to hold my breath. But And I'll bet you five bucks it done. <laughs> it probably I, won't. I agree. It'll be I like agree. 2021, maybe. I don't know. It'll be and like Final it'll Fantasy. it'll be like Kingdom Hearts 2.99999. <laughs> 
<laughs> to the like, tenth power. Like, oh my, stop with the fractions. Stop. Just bring the game. <laughs> I will definitely like that. I know there's a couple games that me and you want, Mia, for sure. That Red Dead Redemption, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, them bears. Yeah. though. we can do this with the wagons <laughs> and the harpoon. I just want that foyer that shoots at everybody as they walk through. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're gonna get a really good game with Rockstar. I mean, Rockstar has yet to guide you terribly wrong. So that alone is like, here's my money. In fact, have my entire check. Also, the Humankind Odyssey, if it comes out. We don't know if Wait, it's... which one's that? This oh. is the game that's by Patrice Desolet. He's the creator of the Assassin's Creed franchise. He got let go from Ubisoft back in, what, 2013, I think. He yeah. went off on his own, and he's making a new, a completely new IP that has some ties, not necessarily to Assassin's Creed. It but, gives you yeah, built. If you remember some of the um, puzzles and glyphs from Assassin's Creed 2, it sort of ties a little bit back to that but the development of the human species and our evolution and stuff like that. So, yeah, okay. I'm excited about it. And the trailer <sighs> is, is a couple years old, but you have to watch it. It's great, but it also gives good fanfare to those who are familiar or had played the Assassin's Creed series mm-hmm. and as fans of that. You see the overtones and the potential of, of that game. Can't wait for it to come out. So, as long as the game is good, I'll wait. But I think it's going to be worth it because it seems very focused on story and player experience rather than yeah. Yeah. money. There's a new sort of startup development company that has been like kind of recruiting experienced developers. They're creating this new business model where they actually get to keep the right to the IPs that they make and he's good. part of that initiative. So I have some good feelings about this. So mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. after he's been burned twice by Ubisoft so I'm glad that he's finally found like, a stronghold because he's such a great developer. Assassin's Creed at least in the beginning goes to show how good he is in creating wonderful IPs so I can't wait. All right. Also, a way out yes! is that that prison Sorry. escapism co-op game. <laughs> you can't don't be wait late. for that shit. There's actually a bit of news around that. I uh, hadn't heard this until this week, uh, but apparently, with a way out, only one of you has to buy it. Yes, one of you buys it, and the other person is like, "Oh yeah, I'm I'm in." So it's like thirty dollars for two people to play it. That is. It's going back Freaking to the old boss. school method. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. one of the things that they let us know about off top was like, hey, we want to encourage a couch co-op experience. You can play online, but the couch co-op really where it's at. Because, again, yeah. it's kind of like with Army of Two. You have to have that communication channel. You have to be able to work together. There are occasionally relationships like that that you can kind of make online. But this is really something that's designed to reinforce a friendship, to bring together people who already have a connection and allow them to experience something together. So huge props to them for deciding to make that a thing. Yeah. And make it as easy as possible. Oh, yeah. It's going to be awesome. I mean, if this definitely succeeds in all the ways that I believe it should, then this can definitely set the trend for games going this way, too. Going back to classic couch co-op. We get that much anymore, mm-hmm. except for Lego mm-hmm. games. It will be a nice change to actually have a good, strong AAA title, at least one of this caliber. Also, we kind of talked about this one in passing, but I just saw the trailer for this last week. I want it so I can just kill that bastard. <laughs> Detroit. Okay. I yeah. Detroit. Yes. <laughs> I watched the car trailer, and as someone who has a daughter, that was an incredibly difficult thing to watch. Finish watching that particular trailer, and I'm like, holy crap, this is going to be hell. Mm Yeah. I need to buy this game and I need to play this because this is not my situation. I'm not fighting the urge to, to do these horrible things that the guy does to his kid. But that is so far removed from my reality. (laughs) And yet, this is something that is a part of somebody's and thousands of people's daily lives. I can watch a movie about something, but to experience the helplessness and the desire to take charge and make this a thing that doesn't happen in a video game, I think will prepare me to look for signs and for possible scenarios where maybe I can make a difference in the real world. And so I see this game as an incredibly important one for me to play as a father. You know, seven years from now, we're actually going to have to be answering to our AI overlords. So, (laughs) you know, I need to be ready for that. I know that it's gotten in face with a ton of controversy because of the the entire child abuse thing. But I'm glad this is being told, not for the sake of it being exploited in any way, but for it's telling a story that someone out there is living that right now. Mm -hmm. But that is someone's hell they're currently in. And one of the things that Cage has explicitly said is 
the negative consequences of your actions will not be played out on camera for the sick fucks that would be excited Relish about that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad. And so this is designed to be handled delicately, but also to be upfront and in your face about it. And these are questions that we need to be addressing and facing. And I'm proud of the industry for being able to continue to move forward in that way. Because sometimes it takes that immersiveness to let people see and understand. It is fucking tough just to watch the trailer. I'm already a wuss when it comes to choice games. I hate living with the choices I made. Hence why I am still grieving for Rex in Mass Effect 1. But it's just still a tough choice. But with that much emotional gravity and that much at stake, I can only imagine how my complete outlook would change after playing a game like that it's a great way to even show if you are capable of empathy that's all of our games that we're looking forward to let's go into favorite gaming moments my favorite gaming moments of this year has been definitely clan development being able to develop my clan on destiny 2 and becoming that family unit especially this past week when we played that definitely manifested into where able to fall into something comfortable like that so i really appreciate bungie being able to develop something of that caliber for everyone to share. Also, how surprised I was getting into Overwatch. I am terrible at competition play. Me playing Crucible matches proves that I'm terrible. I was surprised being able to play Overwatch and getting engrossed with not only the characters, but also the lore and everything that Blizzard definitely puts down and projects to us each and every day. So I am really grateful that Mia finally told me to get on that Overwatch train. So thank you, Mia. Also, I am sinfully happy about EA's comeuppance and that's all I'm going to say about that. And (laughs) I do have to say like one of my favorite gaming moments was when we were playing the beta for Ghost Recon Wildlands and how my brother pretty much owned us both. That was like the greatest gaming moment I've ever had in my life. And yeah, how my brother was just like, yeah, I've already shot like 15 people while y'all are up to try and calculate what y'all want to do over here. And shout outs to my bro for being awesome, badass player. So cool. That's mine. My favorite moments from this year. Finally finishing Persona 5. It took me 118 hours, I think. I thought you were about to say years, but you know. It's been 84 years, but I finally finished it and it was the first game that I've done a new game plus on. I just felt like it was a huge accomplishment because it is such a time sink and I really feel good about the decisions I made and the relationships I forged, but the message especially, it really just stuck with me. Another one, making friends on Overwatch. Like we met so many really awesome people this year and then I've actually been able to convince some of my other friends and be like hey you should check out this overwatch game meet up and do stuff and i'm really happy about jim boone returning to volition even though this is kind of at the expense of the changes with agents of mayhem and the layoffs i do think it's a sign that developers are sort of waking up to what's going on they're about to lose their fan base if they don't get it together and what i do like about the saints row communities they're very vocal we're small but we're mighty right and it seems as though jim is very aware of kind of where things went wrong in terms of the whole series but also understanding their user base but i think his return is a sign that maybe they're going to get back to basics and then just all the badass women this year in video games i'm just like i just want to play all the things i don't have the time and i don't have the money but even though kind of squishy about creatures i want to play horizon zero dawn because she looks like a badass in terms of representation overall it's just been a wonderful year for a gamer so i'm excited kevin what are your favorite gaming moments for this year well being able to share in a lot of the moments that i had with my girls i mean they've been gaming for forever before they even really started actually playing games i cut the cords off of a couple of old gamecube controllers so that they could pretend to play while i was playing and and so it's been really fun to see them come into their own one of my favorite slash proudest gaming moments was when I heard Nora refer to, because they have Kindles and so they have the garbage mobile games, but she was playing this one game. She's really into fashion and she likes really fancy stuff. And so she was like, I have to play these and I have to click on the posters to get these things. But it's not like a real game though, daddy. So it's okay. And I was like, damn right. I have taught 
huge difference <laughs> between a mobile game and a real game. Oh. And so that was really cool. Nora is actually starting to pick up my masochism and she is working her way through Super Meat Boy. Oh, wow. Wow. So I don't know how far she's going to get in that, but I am fucking proud of the fact that she's trying. Every once in a while, she'll be like, can you show me how to do this one? And so I actually erased all my progress so that it can be her game. Just being able to have those experiences. And then one of the other things that happened this year, we've been doing Twiatch for two years and a couple mm-hmm. of months. And this year, we really started to get recognized by a couple of game developers and stuff. We were able to get our first preview copy, review copy, and our first free game from various developers. And that's really cool. We, Congratulations. We, yes. Here on the Ubisoft games list. Oh, wow. Uh, we got that maybe a week or two before Assassin's Creed Origins. So, like, those had already gone out, and I get that and everything. But if we can get a preview copy of Far Cry 5 and I can have a review for that, like, when it comes out, I will be so happy and so proud of that. My main thing is I just wanted to hang out with Patrick every week, mm-hmm. just talk with him and everything. And that way I don't annoy Courtney. I listen to so many podcasts yeah. every week. I just accumulate this knowledge, and it was really cool to finally be able to share that. And the show is as much for me as it is for anybody who's listening. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm excited when people interact and when people come and join and watch and they're like, oh yeah, that was, that was a really good video or this walkthrough helped me or whatever. That's cool. I'm mostly doing this for me. But it's really cool to see that work recognized because we're on episode 118. Congratulations. And we, and we have not missed a week yet. That's awesome. I'm proud of that. That takes That's a not, lot. I'm proud of what I make. What y'all make, you should be proud of it. Because what you're bringing to the table and presenting your audience with is something special. At the end of the episode, you know, we're going to talk about new followers. We're going to tell people where to follow you and everything. But y'all are making some badass content. Even if nobody but me was listening, y'all do a good fucking show. Thank you. Damn it, Kevin. I'm going to cry. And I, <laughs> Okay. I'm proud of you for what you've done. You've chosen to make something special. And I'm proud of what I've done this year. And so even more than any of the actual moments in video games that I've done, the fact that I've cultivated these relationships and I've got this relationship with you, Redbeard, and I've got Jake the Snake, all these people that I've met through podcasting. I really feel like I'm starting to build a community of support and people who actually give a damn about what I'm doing. That makes me really proud. You've been working hard. You deserve it. Yeah. Thank you. Such a great job and especially do the dedication multiple times a week you have our unending support and you have ours oh homies for life this is why we got to do podcasts in person because i need to give y'all guys a hug oh <sighs> virtual hug until after the holidays then we'll virtual then we'll hug yes <laughs> all right i'll jazz hands at you later. <laughs> jazz jazz hands hands. Hug. all right but before we go i want to spin the wheel the <gasps> wheel of random tandem <gasps> oh so all right all right let's spin it you ready we're gonna spin ready it. And post. All right. So for today's Wheel of Random Tandem, Kevin, we're going to start with you. Do you have any gaming regrets for the end of the year? The biggest one I had, funny story, this actually happened with the PS4 too. I saved up enough to buy the Switch and then I had bills come due with the savings I, I saved up for the Switch. But I chose to do therapy and work on myself instead of taking a break from that and going back into video games. Because I love video games. Damn it, I need therapy more. I know this. Amen. Yeah. So I'm bummed that I wasn't able to get the Switch, but I know that I'm moving forward. I'm making the right decisions, but I'd still want a damn Switch. And then my other one is not picking up Nier Automata because that game, I've been watching obsessively. I don't think I've ever watched this many videos on a game I don't know. That game is so weird and deep, and I love the hell out of it. I still haven't gotten a chance to play it, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm kind of bummed that I didn't get in on the ground floor. There's going to be people that are like, oh yeah, Nier Automata, that was such a great game back when I played it, back when it came out. And I'm like, like yeah. I was was broke. (laughs) Life happens all the time. But yeah, those are my main two. But those are both things that I plan to remedy in 2018. I will no longer have to regret. Woohoo! Amen. Mia, what you got? Oh, just not really playing enough of the current games this year. I've been so busy doing plays and it's been taking time away from actual game time because you're in rehearsals so many hours and stuff. But I can't really complain too much because it's led to some other really awesome things. But I wanted to get my hands on Gravity Rush 2 and Near Automata because I 
follow Super Butter Buns and she was like, you got to get this game. This is the pros and cons. And I'm like, I want the thing. Give me the thing. And now that AC Origin seems like it's panned out pretty well, I want that. And it looks so pretty. And I just want to do yeah. all the things. I've wanted to get into AC for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, and Origins seems like the place that I can jump in. So I'm going to borrow it from Cass after she beats it. Oh, awesome. So. It looks gorgeous. And I feel like I've been kind of a snob this year. 2016 kind of burned me a little. I felt like I had to be a little bit pickier about the games that I wanted and saw what happened with Agents of Mayhem and then Andromeda. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Full stop. We're going to wait until yeah. get all the info and all the facts. Well, I honestly encourage gamers in general. There is no reason to be paying full price for a game and then realize, you know it's what? Crap. Yeah, exactly. This is crap or this is broken. From software, I will buy their stuff as soon as it hits the show. I trust them. They have built a decade of trust with me. I don't have that with anybody else. We reward them with our money exactly. when they give us what they're supposed Good. to give oh, us. Exactly. What a concept. Like, as much as I love AC, I stopped putting down all that money after Unity. I'm like, yeah. uh, no, that's cool. But I will say the one developer I will put money on for sure is Rockstar. Rockstar. Have not got me wrong yet. But if Red Dead Redemption comes out wrong, they're going to be receiving a whole bunch of hate mail. So what are your gaming regrets then, Tiff? Pretty much the same as you. It just seems like this year has just been such a blur with a lot of personal stuff happening that a lot of the games kind of got lost in the shuffle. I didn't get to finish a lot of AAA titles. Mm Mm-hmm. This is not even including this year. It's just any of the ones I had in the queue. And so by the time I got to this side of the year, it just seems like it's just been dedicated to ongoing gameplay. Overwatch and Destiny 2 seems like the only two games I've been reporting on. I actually did get to finish Legend of Zelda. That has been a life dream. I awesome. managed to fulfill that this year. So It is a wonderful game. And once you've beaten it, there's a level of appreciation that you get for it. So props to you. Thank you. It was thoroughly enjoyable. And not a lot of streaming as per usual. It's just been a weird year and sometimes just so hard for us to either do something together or do something entirely because by the time you get home from a long day of work sometimes you just don't have the voice Mm -hmm. to dedicate to stream it's not just playing a game and talking you have to have some of yourself to put into it yeah right so it's a performance to a certain extent, you know. It is. You it have is. to hold your attention somehow, so. I just hate sometimes when I'm trying to figure out a puzzle, sometimes I'm being silent until I can think to figure it out. I wish I could do more of that next year. I can't even say that I will be able to do that, but I will try my best. Cool. All right, so, Tiff, do we have any final thoughts? Them socials, yo, that YouTube, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Tumblr. Please mm-hmm. do the thing. I'll go ahead and throw mine out. Follow me at Twiatch or at This Week in Our Collective Heads on on Facebook. We're on YouTube as Twiach. Reach out because we respond and I love having interactions with people and most Fridays we post the topic of the episode show for that week's episode. So if you respond in those threads then we'll throw you up in the comments and we'll read your answers as part of our discussion. So yeah. Awesome sauce. As for new followers we have Clay Barnes from Twitter. Welcome. I, we hope we don't scare you off. No promises. Pretty much this is what you're getting. So Still follow us on the socials but just letting you know what it is. We also have a couple of special shout outs. We have Mark Roma and Token Black Chick on Twitter. <laughs> Thank you guys. Y'all are amazing. And then Tiffany has been busting her butt posting new videos on our YouTube about I finally did. Wizard World and our adventures and going to different panels, like going to see Stephen Bloom. And that was just an experience. Magic. <sighs> My life is complete. But definitely go Great. on YouTube if you haven't subscribed. And I think we're going to try a test pilot of starting to run our podcast episodes on YouTube. So yeah. if you can't catch it through iTunes, I know Google Play can be a little bit iffy. You can check it out on YouTube as well. And yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. And we got the PYT. Yeah. Yeah. So the PBS Digital Studios have a number of channels, like one for literature, they've got one, the Crash Course Mythology, one for history, all these different ones. But one of the ones I see that just doesn't seem to get the love that a bunch of other channels get is Origin of Everything. Hmm. And it's got this girl who's really knowledgeable. She really does her research on stuff. A couple of weeks ago, they had one on the origin of artificial flavors. They talk about really interesting things and like how we got to now. What are the reasons things are the way they are? And 
and their videos only get a, a couple of hundred hits and usually a lot of the other PBS studios get a lot more. I don't know why. I also want to shout that out because I'm all about that representation because I like my own show and everything, but there's plenty of white boys out there. <laughs> we got to make sure that we're looking out and finding the people who are bringing quality content mm -hmm. regardless of anything else that's going on. So Origin of Everything on YouTube, highly entertaining. Mm -hmm. And because it doesn't get the views, it's a lot easier to get your comments read on the show because at the end of every show, they'll talk about some of the interesting questions that they got in the comments from the previous episode. Oh. So jump on that. Cool. I will definitely subscribe to that. Practically as much stuff as I can. I no, love it. You, you are a valuable information sponge. Exactly. Oh, thank you. I happen to choose Saber Spark. Mia, did you watch an episode a couple of episodes ago for him i like his channel because he talks a lot about cartoons especially yes. and some of the bad things about you know the big three like cartoon network nickelodeon disney what ruined them what ruined them the good the bad all of the stuff in between and he gives some really good analysis it's not just him hating on it because it's new and it's right. not part of his generation like he looks at it from a very specific mindset from a critical standpoint from a very yeah. critical yeah. standpoint so like, and from like a nostalgia standpoint yeah. yeah. Diff introduced me into him, actually. Yeah, it's been great. The reason why I'm introducing him in this topic is because he did one on what ruined Sega. So oh, that's it, right. It, yes. Yes, that was a good really, one. Really, really good. I learned that Sega actually is shorthand for service games. I had no idea. It's older than we thought it was. Sega kind of goes beyond what we knew in the 80s and 90s. And so it pretty much tells of how it got started, how the game system had rolled out, and what all ended it. And that's no good. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, too soon. <laughs> Definitely see the one on Sega, but of course watch all his other stuff. He's such a great detail-oriented. All he wants is shit to be done right. Actually subscribe while we're talking, so. Sweetness! All right, me, what you got? I have Nerdy and Quirky on YouTube. Ooh. I love her. She's amazing, but she talks a lot about history and nerd culture and how to be a decent human being, and she's just very witty and a very relatable person, and so if you get a chance, follow her on YouTube, because she's part of the Nerd Fighteria people, DFTBA folks, oh, and that's, hell yeah. that's how I got into her several years ago but she has an amazing insight even when she was back in high school was like you are an amazing person and you're gonna grow up and be an even more amazing person so definitely follow her if you want to learn some things and get insight into just growing up as a millennial and all that stuff that comes along with it so yeah she'll make you think she's awesome Straight up i um, love thinking Yes. I do too. <laughs> also, we have a couple of upcoming events. We have the Women of WonderCon da, 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 on March 10th. Also, All Con from March 15th through the 18th. We also have Dallas Fan Expo, which will be April 6th through the 8th. And we also have the TCC South Campus Anime Expo, April 14th. Kevin, you're more than welcome to come with us if you can. Do you have any upcoming events that you're going to do, Kevin? I'm finishing off my stream for Shadow of War. I think I've just got one mission left. And I've been posting the kind of the main storyline for that. And I think that's what I'm going to do for a little bit moving forward is do the main story missions for open world games because there's a lot of games that there's a lot of fun and extra things that go along with them. But open world games, the pacing is kind of difficult to follow. Yeah. Everybody's going to have a little bit different experience. So the idea that I came up with is what if there was a game that you were interested in, but you mostly just kind of wanted to see the story. That's what I did with Shadow of War and that's what I'm wanting to do moving forward. Same thing with Neo. And so that's that's kind of my main focus right now is getting the story of games that either take a really long time to beat or there's a whole bunch of distractions. Those all get posted on YouTube and then obviously before that on Twitch. So yeah. Awesome. Yay. Our next episode will be released January 14th. So we'll be taking a slight break, but we will still be releasing stuff. Oh, I have man. Because I... like I will have already heard this episode. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Just ahead of the curve. But we do owe you off topics and that's my fault. So those will be coming soon. Soon, hopefully. It's been busy though. It's yeah. It's been hella busy. Yeah, but it's all good. But yeah, just make sure you're subscribed and that way January 14th you can get the next episode fangirl with us let us 
us know what you liked, what you didn't like. And yeah, definitely hit up Kevin and see what he's up to. Kevin, when is your next episode releasing? We release every Monday. So we're able to get it out fast. And that way we can stay on top of the news and everything. And then we have gaming videos coming up on Tuesday through Thursday. And the topic of the episode show goes up on Wednesdays. There you go. Thanks for letting me come on. I will be back on this show. Yeah, you will. Subscribe to them Mm -hmm. and keep coming back until I show up. Honestly, y'all do a great show. I appreciate it. I enjoy it every week. And y'all talk about stuff that I might not necessarily find on my own. I appreciate that. Oh, we love you too. No, always the same. Always a fountain of knowledge. Especially the episode we was talking about Mafia 3 in the Luke Cage episode. I'm like, y'all get it. You understand. It didn't Mm -hmm. even have to explain that. We're all moving forward together. Mm-hmm. Yes, because we can only do it together. Everyone have a great holiday. Turn up responsibly. Game responsibly. Not really. Enjoy the hell out of the rest of this year. Bye, y'all. Bye. Stay Bye. game-tastic. Bye. Woo!